Let's look at some of the workflows with working with height fields using COPS in Houdini 21. So I'm in Solaris here. I'm just going to jump into a SOP create. You can do this just directly into a CopNet, but if you're going to be working from COPS into SOPs and bringing your, your data from from COPS into SOPs, then it's maybe a better idea to work directly into a SOP like container, whether that's the geo container or the SOP create. The reason for that is if we drop down a COPNet, if you look here, we have an output to this. If I do this just on like the stage level, for example, we don't have that output. And that output allows us to just directly output our COP network. So let's dive inside and just to show kind of how this is going to work, I'm going to drop down a fractal noise. And this is going to give us just some noise, something to work basically as our height. So if you don't know much about COPS, the way that COPS works is what you're seeing here is not actually a, it's not actually an image. This is actually a 2D height field being displayed to what looks like an image to us. So if I jump up here, I'm going to go ahead and come to this copnet. I'm going to set this plane to be the ZX plane so that we have something more akin to a height field, like layout. And if I go ahead and press this little eye icon right here, we can see that we have a volume here. So that is what this is. This is a 2D volume that's being displayed in our viewport. If I go ahead and drop down a height field node, and I look at that same thing, you can see we have actually two volumes on this because we have a mask, but we also have this height volume that has basically the same settings that we have on our copnet. And that's because they are essentially the same thing. Now our volume is named something different because it is named what the output of this is. So if I were to put down a null, wire this in, and if I were to call this null, the out of this null height, we should see our volume be changed to height here. So we can see that it is not being displayed as height. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We are going to want to have these named the same as a normal height field volume would be. So we call this height. So the way that we can do that is just with a simple name node. And we're going to wire that in, take a look at it, and then we can just call this height. And now if we look at this, you can see we now have this height, but we still have this little icon right here and that's going to be the display mode. So I can take this and drop down a primitive properties and come over to this volumes and we're going to adjust this visualization. So we don't want to display it as smoke. We want to display it as a height field. So if I look at this, you can see that the icon has changed. Now we have the same thing we have on our height. And if we just set that back to like image, you can see we get that back to the same icon that we had before. Let's set that back to height. And you can see that we have this displayed to us as what looks like a high field now. And we can start to mess with this. So if I take this height field node and I drop a, let's do a height field remap actually after this primitive. And actually before this, let's get this to the same size as a height field. So let's drop down a transform. And because this is going from negative one to one, this is a two by two grid. We can set this to be a uniform scale of 500. And that's going to scale this up to be the exact same size as this height field here. So you can see we essentially have the same thing here. We do have a noise being applied to this, this stream. So if I look at this height field remap, if I compute our range, you can see that that's going to set the input and the output max. I'm going to set those back to zero and one because that's what our noise can kind of float between. And I'm going to set our output min to be zero and we can set our output max to be like 500. And now we have something a little bit more like what you'd expect for a height field. Now I can take this and actually we could just set this to like negative 250 and 250 if we want to drop this closer to a centered noise. So let's leave it like that. And let's unpin the viewport so it's not going to be pinned by default. And let's actually make sure that this is pinned so that we can dive inside of our copnet and we can play with this element size now. 
So as we play around with this, you can see that we're getting something a little bit more like what we would expect out of a height field. If we were to drop down a height field noise and look at these, you can see that we have something very similar to what we have with our height field noise. So we've got maybe a little bit more detail in this, this one, but we could take like a blur. And now we get some of that detail that's lost. So something more closer to what we have with the height field noise. Now, obviously you don't have to do that if you don't want to, as it kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, having all that, that detail in there. But if you wanted to get something closer to like this bass noise that you have with the height fields or the height field noise, then you can get that similar thing. Now we can also take a height field, it is a height field layer. And we can kind of control this a little bit better. So I'm going to wire in just the base height field into this height field layer. And I'm going to take our height field remap and wire that into our terrain to layer here. So if I take this and let's say I want to just kind of blend this, by default it's going to be set to replace. If I want to just blend between the two, obviously we have this blend amount here that we can control kind of how much we're going to blend between the two height fields. So we can do some things in stops here with like a height field noise or whatever we want. Or if let's say we didn't zero this out or zero center this, I should say, if we had this set to like that zero and 500 or we have this type of a noise where it's super raised. We can take this and wire this into a height field layer. And now we can take this. Let's go ahead and blend it a little bit more. And let's take our layer offset here and let's drop this down. So now we can just bring that back down into the same realm that we would normally expect with a height field noise. Now, one other thing with this, let's go ahead and jump back into our cop net and let's set the display back down this uh, fractal noise. And that's going to change our output here. So whatever you have your display flag set on in here is going to be the output node for your cop net. So we have some settings here. If I actually take a look at this default resolution, you can see that this is set to 1024 by 1024. And if I look at our details for our cop net, you can see that's going to be the resolution of our height field. And that's going to transfer all the way down here as well. So this is 1024 by 1024. So by default, this height field is going to be set to that same, well, I guess it's 500 by 500. Uh, but you can set that to be 1024 as well, if we set that to by axis, and now you see that we have the same thing as we would have on our height field that we're exporting here. But if we want to, we can control this as well. So if we wanted to drop that down, we can come to the little drop down. We can set this to be a 512. You can see we lose some of that detail in there as well. If I could drop this down all the way to 256, we lose basically all of that detail. And if I look back at our properties here, you can see our resolution is actually going to drop down to that 256 as well. Now, obviously, you can drop down a height field resample. I'm actually not going to do this because this crashed my Houdini earlier, so be careful with this. Uh, it might actually crash you, but you can resample, or you should be able to resample your height fields up but we can also just change our resolution here. So if we want a more detailed uh, height field, we can get a higher resolution here. And you can see, again, we have that resolution going up higher there as well. So let's set that back to the default. And if we uncheck that, we should be all back to normal. So that's how we're going to be able to bring in our CopNet information into SOPS and then you can start to play around with it. Like I said, there's also the height field erode, which if you're not aware, you should be updating to the newest production build because the height field erode in the original production build of Houdini 21 had some sort of error and it wasn't, it wasn't um, running as fast as it should. So in 21.0.5, 512. It should run a little bit faster, I believe. And you can see that we already have something here with this erosion. You can see that if I go ahead and uncheck that freeze at frame five, 
Let's go ahead and see what this looks like with some erosion. So this is definitely running a lot faster than what I got out of the uh, first production build. So definitely update if you haven't already to the newest production build. And this should um, clear up some of that speed slowdown that you had in the, the original uh, Houdini 21 release. So this is all running off of COPS as well. Inside of here, you can actually dive inside and see there's a cop net in here. You can see kind of what's going on. There is a lot going on here, but you can dive in here and go node by node and see what's going on and see how it works if you want and learn some more things about COPS. This is pretty detailed and a semi-complex setup, but you also don't have to if you don't want to. But I wanted to show how we can bring our information from COPS into SOPS. I'll also take a look at how we can bring our information from SOPS into COPS because the workflow is a little bit weird. And I just wanted to show kind of the things that I think are maybe wrong with it right now or not necessarily wrong with it, but make it a little bit more difficult to, to work with inside of COPS. But anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.